This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. The Lord God is King of kings and Lord of lords. That's wherever he is. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is King over his kingdom. Amen. And we need to know that in this earth realm. The problem with the earth, sometimes man gets busy doing men stuff, amen, and forget that God is ruling from heaven, even in the affairs of men, amen. And so we are in the last days. There are certain signs that tells us that we are in the last days, amen. And as believers, we need to be able to discern the, the signs of the times, amen. And so we want to get right into the word of God on that vein to let us know where we are, amen. And to let us know what should we be doing? What is our response, amen? Say, seeing that this is the last days, amen. In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, the disciples asked Jesus, um, what, what will be the sign of your, of your coming? What, what is the sign of your coming and the end of the age? So two things, the, the sign of his coming and the end of the age. Amen. And so Jesus responds in verse four, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. So there will be a lot of deception in the last days. In the end of times, there will be much deception. There will be many who um, carry themselves as people of renown, even saying that they are Christ, that they are of Christ and they will deceive many. There will be many who say that they are anointed, that they are someone special, amen, and that they will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, amen. So I want to stop there. These things must be. There's certain things they have to happen. They're going to happen. Amen. But you, you're not supposed to be troubled because God will tell you what is your posture and what is your stance. And whatever your posture, your stance, know this, that your God is with you. Amen. And that God is sustaining you and God is protecting you. And God is keeping you. So there'll be things that are happening, which are called signs. And we see these signs happening. Amen. There'll be wars and rumors of wars. Amen. There will be deception. Amen. It says, for nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Pestilence is plagues and, and diseases, you know, that, that whether they are um, the, the, of viruses and things like that, there, there will be plagues and pestilence and diseases in the last days. Amen. That's one of the signs that we are in the last days. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. They will be offended, they will betray, they will hate. Amen. It says, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. So the constant the, the, of what is happening in the last days, the constant is that the, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached. That some translation says that the message 
of the kingdom. Amen. The, the message of the gospel, which is a message of the kingdom, will be preached. Amen. And so we have delved into that. We've been preaching about the Antichrist spirit in this earth. And the Antichrist spirit has a message. Amen. And at the same time, God's message is supposed to be preached. Amen. And that which comes out of the people of God is supposed to be that which is the word of God, which is inspired of the Lord. Amen. And so there are competing messages in these last days, the message of Satan, the devil uses false prophets. Jesus says that there will be false prophets and the devil uses false teachers, amen, to put out his message, amen. And there will be the message from the Lord, amen, which is the constant, which is the that which brings forth stability, Amen. That, that our lives are founded upon the rock. Amen. Jesus is the rock. His word is the rock. Amen. It's forever settled. Amen. That his word endures forever. Amen. And so in these last days, there will be much upheaval. There will be much which is shaking. Amen. And the Bible says that. In Hebrews 12, toward the end, the God is a consuming fire. The Bible says that God is shaking everything which can be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken shall remain. Amen. And we are receiving a kingdom, the Bible says, which cannot be shaken. So we're in the kingdom of God, which cannot be shaken. So in the last days, we are supposed to be found in the kingdom of God and sustained by the message, which is of the kingdom of God. Amen. And so you'll see some things which will happen. The Lord will give you wisdom. The Lord will give you discernment. The Lord will give you revelation so that you are not soon shaken by what you hear. The messages that you hear are to uphold you, amen, to make you stable, to make you uh, safe, to make you uh, sure, to make you secure, amen. And so the messages of the Lord, notwithstanding all the evil and all the upheaval, the message of the Lord will keep you and the message of the Lord will sustain you, amen. So in the book of Malachi, the book of Malachi, chapter 3, amen. Verse 1, it says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Amen. And so prophetically, this is speaking of John the Baptist, but even more, amen. It is, it is actually speaking of the, the spirit of Elijah. Amen. Before Jesus comes, that Elijah must come first. That's what Jesus says. Before he comes, Elijah must come first. So before Jesus would come, there, he would send his messenger to prepare the way for him to come. That it was embodied in John the Baptist. Amen. And his disciples asked him about that. Elijah, they said, isn't it true that Elijah must come first? Jesus says, that's true. But for those who can receive it, Jesus says, Elijah has already come and that many rejected him. Amen. Elijah, amen, comes before Jesus. So before Jesus comes, and we're talking about every advent of Jesus. Amen. Jesus came in, in the form of a man. He was a baby born in a manger, amen, grew up to be Jesus of Nazareth. He, he ministered three and a half years, amen, and John the Baptist came before him, and he preached in the wilderness, in the desert. He prepared the way for the Lord, so Jesus came in bodily form, amen, over 2,000 years ago, amen. And when Jesus finished his ministry, amen, and that he went to the cross, he was raised up, amen. He spoke to his disciples on that same Mount Olive, 
And then the Bible says that he was taken up into the clouds. Amen. And they were still looking as Jesus left. The disciples and all those that had been in the upper room were still looking up at Jesus. I mean, as the cloud as it went away. And the angel said, why do you stand looking up to heaven? The same Jesus, amen, that uh, ascended, amen, will come back again. Amen. And so we're talking about that second coming of the Lord. Amen. So before the Lord comes back, the spirit of Elijah, amen, will prepare the way. Elijah is the, the messenger of the Lord. John the Baptist was the messenger, amen, to prepare the way for the Lord to come back, amen. In other words, the, a message was going forth before Jesus came back. Amen. And before Jesus come back. Amen. And so when Jesus comes back, we will be raptured. Those of the church who are prepared, the prepared bride will be caught up with him in the air. And this world will be continuing for a while. And it will enter into that time called the great tribulation. Amen. For seven years, amen, Antichrist will arise, amen, and he will deceive people for three and a half years. And then for another three and a half years, it will be pure, pure hell on earth as Antichrist uh, uh, tries to ascend and control the earth, amen. So I want, before I continue, I want to I just catch you up on a point, amen. Before Jesus comes back, amen, the spirit of Elijah will come back. That's the way God does. Before the actual Elijah, Elijah will come again as a witness during the time of tribulation. Before Elijah, the spirit of Elijah. Before Christ, the, the spirit of Christ or the anointing or the glory will increase on the church. Before the actual Antichrist appears the spirit of antichrist Be, there is a spirit of, of of antichrist amen there are spirits which precedes the, the the actual coming of a thing amen and so on the wicked side amen antichrist spirit precedes antichrist amen the the spirit of elijah precedes Jesus and precedes the actual Elijah, amen, who will come as a witness, amen. Before Christ, the, the anointing and glory increases on the church. So that's the way to understand the day of the Lord, amen. The, the day of the Lord increases in revelation until the manifestation. The day of the Lord, it increases in revelation and intensity, amen, until the, the, the actual manifestation. And so the increase, amen, the Bible talks about the increase of the kingdom of Jesus. There is no end. Increase, everything increases, increases. Those who are sensitive, amen, to the things of God, that they are aware that things are increasing, increasing. But as things begin to increase, you need to hear the message of the Lord to know what is happening. Amen. And so that's what Jesus does. He does not want you to be deceived or deluded. Amen. Before the day of the Lord, certain things happen. Signs. Amen. Those that are connected to the Lord are sensitive to what is happen happening. They're not shaken because they are sustained by the message which is of the Lord. So again, let's read it again. Before I send my messenger, I, and he will prepare the way for, for me. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way for me. So those that the Lord raised up with the message as John the Baptist to prepare the way for the Lord with the message, amen, that in the last days, the spirit of Elijah shall come upon the messengers of the Lord, amen, that they will speak by inspiration, amen. It shall be even as if fire will come out of their mouth on the message, the fire, amen, to inspire, amen, and the, the, the ability to set on fire, amen. On a wicked sense, 
The devil incites, he inspires people with a message that sets on fire, which causes captivity and destruction. Amen. If you heed the message of Satan, amen, from his messengers, amen, who set on fire, amen. But the difference is instead of the revival fire that God does, the message of Satan, it, it causes destruction and captivity. Amen. So the people of God are not to heed the message of Satan because Satan is a liar and his messengers are liars. Amen. And so the Lord sends his messenger and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Think about that. Amen. And so the messenger, the spirit of Elijah speaking, which causes Jesus to suddenly come to his temple. We are his temple, amen, To for Jesus to appear, amen, to the body of Christ, amen, for Jesus to manifest, for Jesus to come suddenly, amen. But for those who are prepared, they are prepared for the coming of the Lord. The, the, the suddenness of the Lord coming does not alarm us, amen. We are those who says, even so, Lord, come quickly. Amen. So the Lord has come suddenly. It says, even the messenger of the covenant. So Jesus, we switch from John the Baptist being the messenger to Jesus being the, the messenger. Amen. So what am I saying? I'm saying this, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the messenger anoints his messengers with a message to prepare his people for his coming. Amen. And he will, he will come suddenly. Amen. So the messengers of, of Christ carry his spirit, which causes them to be faithful to his message. Amen. The messengers of Christ are faithful to his message and they they will not um, adhere to the message of Satan at all. Amen. There's no mixture. They, they will not mix messages. Amen. And so they will be seen, seen as harsh because they will speak with fire. They will speak with commitment. Amen. Loyalty to the Lord, faithfulness to the Lord. So their message comes from the messenger. Jesus is called even the messenger of the covenant. Amen. The word of God is the covenant. Amen. That we have a covenant with God. It is his word. His, it, it, it testifies of Christ and it testifies of his faithfulness. Amen. If there's anything about this message is how faithful God is. Amen. And so the Lord is the messenger of the covenant. He is a faithful messenger. So his message is faithful to the word. Amen. So we preach and there are many who preach, but many times their messages are not faithful to the covenant. Amen. And so they try to uh, away two different things. They try to carry Two different messages. Amen. So the messenger, John the Baptist, spirit of Elijah, prepares the way for the messenger who is Christ. Amen. Who is faithful. He's the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. And he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering of righteousness. Amen. So as the Lord comes, that the intensity of the Lord is coming. The Bible says it is like the, the fire, the heat of an oven. Amen. And so as the Lord comes, the day gets hotter. Amen. And so we, the people of God, we offer sacrifices of righteousness unto the Lord so that we can endure the Lord's coming. Amen. And so we began to be purified. 
It, the intensity of the light and the fire of the day of the Lord comes from the messages of the Lord. The, in the last days, the messages of the Lord will prepare the bride, prepare the church for his coming. Amen. So that her garments will be pure. Her garments will be white. Amen. That she has shown that she is faithful. Amen. The Lord's bride will be one who is faithful. What do I mean by that? She is not stained with the stains and, and the coverings of that which is of the world. Amen. He is coming for a church without spot or, or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. And in, in, in other words, he's coming for a church who receives the message. You, you know, people have accused the people who teach holiness and, and righteousness as being religious or, or, or ritualistic. Amen. That, that, that legalistic. But that's not how it works. Amen. You love the Lord. You say you love the Lord. Jesus says that he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. Fire is also that which causes you to be passionate unto the Lord. Amen. And so the Lord reveals light. He reveals the truth by the light because you love the Lord. Amen. Think about this, that if the Lord, if you were the bride of Christ or you were espoused to the Lord, amen, and the Lord would woo you, amen, he would speak loving words to you, amen, you, you would be um, as that the, the, the Shunammite woman in the Song of Solomon, that his, his words would drop, amen, and you would receive his words because you love him, amen. And so the, the word of God in the message of the Lord are words of love. And so the Lord is wooing his bride with words because he loves them, amen. And so you embrace the Lord as you embrace his message, his words, amen. And that would clean your garments. It would prepare you, amen, to receive the Lord. It's, all of, it's, it's not legalism, amen. It, it is not religion. It is, it is, a, it is a wooing. It is, it is a loving. The, in the last days, the intensity of the passion for the Lord shall increase, amen, as the Lord woos his bride, amen. He speaks those words of, of because he loves words of love, amen, and they are received. The message is, are, the, his message is received, amen. His, his, his message is not blocked. The, his message is not scoffed at, amen. In the last days, there will be scoffers. Who are scoffers? Those who reject the message of the Lord and think that they know better. So the messenger, amen, of the covenant, amen, who is a faithful messenger, that he is a purifier, amen. And so the message will purify, amen. God's messengers will be purifying the church, amen. And at the same time, the devil will be putting out messages in hopes that the church will listen to his message and not be led by the spirit, that they would be led by fear and selfish motives. The devil, that he desires for the church to listen to his message. That it, it, it doesn't matter that the world listened to his message. He already got the world. But Antichrist cannot come unless the church allows him. Jesus says, I'm not going to allow the church to allow Antichrist to come, though his spirit is in this earth. And so the spirit of Christ restrains Antichrist. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus will destroy the actual Antichrist at the end of the tribulation by the words of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. Amen. And so the way that we restrain Antichrist, we who have the spirit of Christ, we restrain Antichrist by the words of our mouth and the brightness of our appearing. Amen. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. 
The, the, the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. The, the, there is a brightness of your appearing, a brightness of your coming. You destroy, you restrain spirit of Antichrist. Even though Antichrist is in the world, he can't do what he wants. He cannot do what he wants if the church will be what God has called the church to be. Amen. Which is seen in Isaiah chapter 60. Amen. The, the intensity. You're supposed to allow the anointing to increase. It's a time of increase. Amen. The glory to increase. Amen. The church wants the, the, the devil wants the church to listen to his message. And this is the message from Satan. He wants the church to stand down. Amen. All, all he wants, you, you hear that in the, uh, the policeman circles or military. It means to, to, to not to engage. Amen. That, that, that to, to put your weapons down, stand down. Amen. That, 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 that there are orders. Amen. They say, that the, the people were not helped, you know, during that invasion against Benghazi because the message came for the military to stand down. Amen. And it allowed the enemy to come through and, and rout them. Amen. And they were, they, they, they were scattered and had to run as if the enemy had power. But the enemy had no power if they were allowed to use their power. Amen. And so we see a thing. The devil does not want to, you to use your power. The devil does not want you to know. Amen. The, the devil does not want you to operate in anointing. Amen. And so the anointing, amen, it represents the, the, the power of God. It represents the authority of God, but it also represents understanding. So that means that the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding which comes from the Lord, amen, that the mind of Christ, understanding things the way that the Lord intended you to understand, not to be overtaken, not to be fooled, amen, by messages and sounds, amen, not to be afraid of shadows and darkness because the darkness that cannot comprehend the light, knowing who you are and receiving the message, which is of the Lord. Amen. So the church is not necessarily a threat to the devil. Amen. We're supposed to be. It is the anointing, amen, which is a, a threat to the devil. The anointing of authority and power, amen, and the anointing of understanding is what is a threat to the devil. And so we see messages that, that they emanate from Satan to, to try to get the church to stand down, shelter in place, don't meet together, don't lay hands, don't assemble, don't greet with a holy kiss. Amen. Don't soul win. Amen. Give authority to the government to dictate to you whether you will do the will of God or not. Amen. We already know that when the apostles were threatened not to preach in that name, they said, you just decide amongst yourself what you want to do, but we cannot but preach that name or teach in that name. Amen. That you do what you do, you government. God got us. Amen. But we're going to preach that name. So they defied those who said that they were in authority. Amen. Your mandates, your edicts, your commands, they come from God. They come from heaven. Amen. The, the message which the Lord gives causes the army to assemble. It assembles the church, the assembling. That's what that means. It's, it's not just coming together. We are members one of another. Amen. And so when we come together, the giftings and callings, hands is connected to the wrist, to, to the arm. Amen. To the shoulder, to, to the chest. We assemble together. Amen. And when we rise up, 
as the army of the Lord or the anointed. Amen. Jesus is a Christ. He is the anointed. Amen. And so we receive of his anointing as he is. So are we. Amen. We look like Jesus. We act like Jesus. We operate as Jesus because of the anointing. Amen. Which destroys the yoke. It removes burdens. Amen. But also I saw a thing. I saw a thing and the Lord taught me. You know, people, they say, you know, we're the church and we don't bother anybody. We just we just want to operate as the church. Amen. But the anointing means there will be conflict. <laughs> Man, if, if you are anointed, you are anointed against the devil. Amen. And the devil is against you. Amen. You, the, the, you can try. You like, I'm just going to preach. <laughs> That's the way I get when I when the Lord released me into ministry. My wife, I said, I ain't bothering. No, I'm just going to preach. I, I like to be left alone. Amen. The more that I preached the truth, amen, the more the devil would send this person and that person, the more things would be in upheaval, the more there would be fighting, the more that people said I said this when I didn't say that, amen, praise be to God, there, there will be conflict, so the Lord showed me a thing about mindsets, amen, there is a mindset, there is a mind of Christ, there is a mindset which, which goes with the anointing. Amen. And it is a mindset of overcoming. Amen. The Lord has placed you in his world to overcome. The Lord says that I've given you a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. It's a good land. Amen. I've given you a land. Now go take it. Amen. Now, what does the devil say? Here's a message. Here's one of the messages from the devil. You know, there, there, there's precious Hittites and, and Jebusites and, and Gergesites, and they are indigenous people. They are native people of the land. And, uh, you know, maybe you can go in, give them a place, recognize them. And, you know, if you submit to them, they may give you a little portion. That's not what God said. He said, take the land. <laughs> it's your inheritance. Amen. And so there's a mindset. The devil wants you to esteem the things that are of the world, that are of the spirit of the world. Amen. That they are things that the devil wants you to regard as high things or high places. Amen. If you esteem those things, you will not be bowing to God. You will be bowing in high places to things which are called idols or sacred cows. There are certain things that people will not touch. Amen. And so they, they bow to sacred cows about race or, or something like that. They, they will not touch it. It changes how they respond to God. Amen. And they are not able to be anointed. They're not able to operate in anointing. Amen. They're not able to overcome. Amen. And so the, the, the threat to the devil is the anointing. Amen. Be believers. Amen. May be the devil's enemy, but not necessarily a threat. Amen. It, you may be the enemy. You may consider yourself an enemy of the devil. But if you receive his high words or his message, you will not be a threat because you bow down in his high place. Amen. Just because you said, I didn't bow down to Satan. Well, his imp, his, his demon, which represented your, your lust or that thing that you were not able, you were not willing to dishonor, even for the Lord. There are certain things that people are not willing to dishonor, to honor the Lord. Amen. And so that thing was a devil. The devil can come in whatever lust, whatever flavor you desire. Amen. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Amen. And so the devil will find out what things do you esteem above Jesus. That'll be your lust. Amen. That's all he needs. Amen. It doesn't matter 
Listen, God is a consuming fire. I told you everything increases. It purifies. Amen. The devil doesn't, it doesn't matter that you say that you are a Christian. If you don't allow the fire to consume everything which is not the Lord, you cannot be a threat to the devil. You'll blend in. Amen. You will look for a standing or a place in the world. Amen. And those which are of the Lord, the Lord, their place is of the Lord. Amen. And their place ultimately is in heaven. Amen. And so the anointing incorporates the elements of power, authority, wisdom, and knowledge. Amen. And understanding. Amen. The anointing means that God is with us. If God is with us, he is with us to empower us. Amen. And so when we do a thing, it's because we are authorized of the Lord. When we speak a thing, it is because we are authorized of the Lord. The Lord is with us. Amen. We are one with the Lord in this earth. Ring. Amen. The devil's spirit is the spirit of antichrist. You get that. The devil's spirit is antichrist. He is against the anointing because the anointing will stop him in his track. Amen. So the devil sees that Jesus is coming. And so the devil tries to raise up antichrist. That's all that is going on now. The church is still in the world. So we can restrain it as it pertains to the things that, that pertain to the kingdom of God. And even the place where we are, such as the nation that we, we abide in, we can stop that spirit of Antichrist because the Antichrist will come through government. The Antichrist will be a leader, a, go a governmental leader who promises solutions and answers which are not of God's anointing, though there will be faults. There will be lying signs and wonders and false miracles, not of God's anointing, but praising that which is of a man. Amen. He, he will want to be the one who is praised. He will want to be the one who is worshipped. And he will have a message of swelling words, pompous words against the Lord and against his anointing. And so that's what we're seeing going on now. Amen. There are messages which inspire or they inflame. They set things on fire. It is of the devil. Pompous words against the, the Lord and against his anointed. Amen. Even the church being called his anointed. Amen. That message wants the church to stand down so that Antichrist can come. The devil knows that Jesus is coming. The devil knows his time's is short. He's seen, amen, and participated in the signs of the times. It's so funny. God is so perfect in his wisdom that even when the enemy knows a thing, that the enemy is snared. In, in other words, let me say it this way. The, the, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. And yet the Bible says that God has the prepared Evil, even for the day of evil. Not that God participated in evil at all, but God would raise up a Pharaoh, amen, to, to have his heart hardened, amen, so that his power could be seen even in Pharaoh. So the wicked, they do certain things and they fulfill scripture is what I'm saying. The wicked, they do certain things, amen, like Judas Iscariot. The wicked, they do certain things and they fulfill the scripture and they line up, amen, that God said, I told you this would happen and my purposes continue, amen. And so that's what you see. The Bible says, fret not yourself because of evildoers, those that seem to prosper in the way. The, the church needs to be strong, not faint-hearted, amen, not discouraged, so discouraged that you would throw your lot in with a message which is not of the Lord. Amen. You're trying to get relief. Amen. You, you, you're trying to save yourself. You, you're trying to make, you, you're trying to get to the place of understanding or where things make sense. Amen. Now, if you're going to roll with God, amen, that God 
Um, that, 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 that he takes the foolish things to confound the wise. Amen. If you're going to be with God, God with us. Amen. You, you're going to have to understand it will not make sense to the mind. And yet you will have peace and you will have understanding of what God is doing in the earth. And you will participate with God by being a messenger of, of the Lord and adhering to the messages which are of the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 13. The book of Numbers, chapter 13. Verses 27 through 30. This is after Moses sent out the spies 12 chiefs from the, the, each of the tribes of Israel to spy out the promised land. God was giving him the promised land and to report. Now, the word of the Lord, the message of the Lord was that I'm giving you the promised land. Amen. That it is a land, a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. A land of vast, immense resources and fruitfulness. I, I've, I've given that unto you. Now you receive that message that I've given you and the anointing that is upon the message. And I want you to take the land, dispossess the people that are in the land. Amen. Verse 27. And then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. And truly, it truly flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. That's, that's the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land. Those are the enemies of God. It, of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanite dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Verse 30, then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. We are well able. We are anointed to take the land. Amen. God gives power to do a thing. Whatever God tells you to do, he gives you the wherewithal to do it. Amen. God gives you the power to take the land. He gives you the anointing. Amen. So Cain recognized, hey, that the message of the Lord, that anointing is hot. Amen. If, you, if they would have heeded Caleb's message, amen, then the anointing of the message would come upon them. Amen. And they're able to overcome and to do the will of God. Amen. That Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. Spirit, so their message, their inspiration was coming from God. A different place than the message that of the other tribes of Israel, the, the leaders, amen, gave a message which opposed the message of God. It was contrary. Many Christians are, are like these um, people that gave an evil report. They agree it's a good land, amen flowing with milk and honey. They agree that the, the fruit of the land is good. But then they say that the people, they regard the people. In this instance, regarding the people that were in the land is regarding those who were the enemies of God, who had a different spirit. Amen. And so they are regarding the message of Satan. Amen. So they, they, want, they were going to stand down Amen. And not to be empowered, not to be anoint, anointed to take the land. Amen. So believing the devil's lies will strip you of your anointing. They believed the devil's lie. Amen. Though there was an anointing for them, though there was strength, it, it lied with the truth. The anointing was with the message of truth. God is not a man that he should lie. God's words are true. Amen. 
It is God who performs his word. He, he hastens his word to perform it. Amen. And so you get with that. You get with, you put those words in your mouth by the spirit of God and God will um, anoint you, enable you, make you well able to take the land. Amen. If you are anointed, there will be conflict. I said that. So there are certain mindsets of the people. Amen. There is the mindset of the mindset of Egypt, the mindset of the wilderness, and the mindset of the promised land. Amen. The mindset of Egypt, which is a type of the world. Amen. It is called the house of bondage. Amen. And so they were enslaved into the princes of the world. Amen. They were plugged into the world system that they were lightly esteemed by the world. Amen. And the world profited off of them. Amen. The, the, the Pharaoh, the Egypt, they used the labor amen, of the people of God to, to build storehouse cities, amen, and tombs to the dead, amen, the cities to store the world's treasure, amen, they, they use slave labor to do that, amen, and tombs to the dead, in other words, this, this world, Amen. The, and the, the rulers of this world. Hallelujah. That there was not a heaven. Amen. So they would try to take the gold with them. Amen. When they buried a Pharaoh, they buried him with his gold. They buried him with his pet. If the pet was alive, too bad. He's got to die. He's going to be embalmed. And he's going to be put with the Pharaoh, the prince that died. Amen. They will put some of his favorite things, amen. But those things did not ascend any higher. That's why there were tomb raiders and people that who would raid those tombs, amen, because you cannot take that stuff with you. That's the message. You cannot take that stuff with you. And yet in the world, you, you amass as if you could take it with you, amen. So there is a mindset of Egypt. There is a, which does not get you to overcome. There is a mindset of the wilderness where they murmured and complained and longed for Egypt. Their heart was still in Egypt. They were going through a dry place, a place where God was trying to rid them of Egypt. He was trying to purge Egypt out of their heart, that he was trying to get them to trust him, that he will feed them. Their clothes did not wear out. He would give them water to drink. He would take care of them. They would learn worship. Amen. They would learn separation unto God. The wilderness, many people have gone through a wilderness experience before ministry. The ministers should go through a, a wilderness experience because it is a time of separation unto the Lord where you only trust the Lord, it is to prepare you for the promised land. Amen. Amen. And so the mindset of the promised land, first of all, that you are arrayed for war to overcome all the enemies of God. Remember, these are enemies of God. God uses you. Amen. Even your children are arrows. The Bible says your weapons for the Lord. Amen. The Lord uses you to defeat the enemy, the enemy which mocks at you, which laughs at you. But the Lord clothes you with an anointing. Amen. The very one that laughs at you will be overcome. Amen. Those mocking spirits. Amen. amen. That they will be overcome in the name of Jesus amen. as you are empowered by the Lord. Amen. amen. To And then to dwell in the land, trusting in the Lord. Amen. amen. That, that you must trust the Lord for rain. Amen. In its season. The Bible says God did not leave himself without a witness. Amen. But he gave his rain in due season and, and fruitful harvest. Amen. Amen. So the promised land is a, is a land of rain. Amen. And fruitful harvest. Amen. It is, it is a land which is too big. Amen. You know that you're operating by faith because the land that you're operating in is too big for you to handle by yourself. If the Lord is not your help, 
you won't be able to maintain that land. Amen. It's a land of gold and silver and bronze and copper. You have learned the lesson that money is under you. Money does not rule you. Amen. That it is given. Amen. In abundance. It, you, you dig the iron ore. You, you, you dig the gold. Amen. It is, it is so big. Amen. Because you have learned to rule over it. Amen. God says that you have learned about anointing, that it is I who have given you power to get wealth, the anointing for wealth to establish God's covenant in this earth. God gave you the anointing. God gave you the power. Amen. And so there are messages. And, and, and I just I'm just trying to get it across. It depends on what message you receive. Will you receive the anointing? Amen. Or will you stand down and make excuses for what the devil is doing in this earth? Amen. Will you say it's really not so bad and we can endure this, you know, for a little while? Are you using the anointing to put down Antichrist? You don't even have to ask. Antichrist is not supposed to come until the church is raptured out of here. Right. If you can recognize, the Bible says that you're supposed to recognize Antichrist spirit. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Let's let's look at that right quickly. With the time that we have left, Amen. The Bible says it's not even a question: Should I stand against Antichrist? Amen. It says, 1 John chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. The inspiration. I, let me say this very quickly. When you're talking about spirits, you know, there's a such thing as discernment of spirits. You may see a creature or something hideous or even something that transforms itself into an angel of light that looks like it, it may be even something pleasant, but it is a spirit discerning a spirit. But when we're talking about spirits, and I don't know if I made this, you know, clear, we're, we're talking about breath. We're talking about inspiration. The devil operates by spirits. And so he raises up messengers to speak. Someone in your own, own family may speak a thing which is inspired of the devil. That is a spirit because that was a lie. That was a spirit. So when we're, we're talking about spirits, we're mainly talking about breath or inspiration to try to inspire you to act a certain way, to go with the world. The devil will try to inspire you to believe his message. Remember, the devil is a liar. Everything he says is a lie. If you believe his message, you will come under the spirit of delusion and deception. So when we're talking about spirits, we're talking about breath by which people speak mainly. And I know there's others, amen, but I'm, I'm for the sake of learning, teaching, I'm telling you, we're, we're talking about a message. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going into the world. So that, that verifies that false prophets release the lying spirit of deception, spirits, seducing spirits. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Amen. Jesus came in the flesh. That means he came as an anointed man. That means that he died and went to heaven and gave us his mantle or his anointing, that same anointing in this earth. The same thing Jesus did, we do. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The fact that God is with you, that's the anointing. Amen. You will do. You will heal the sick, raise the dead. You will set the captives free. You will get people saved. You will open blind eyes. Amen. You will heal the lame. Amen. And also on a bigger scent, we're talking about mass, the masses of people. Mass, mass. I'm talking about spirits going over groups of people. We have a responsibility to speak the message of Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing so that the people will not be in deception. So God's people will be arrayed. In other words, when, when a messenger of the Lord speaks, it causes the church to stand at attention, amen, to be arrayed for battle, to glisten, to shine in strength, 
and anointing and glory, the message of the Lord, amen, not to stand down or to cower or to look for some kind of rational, psychological message to explain things, amen. By this, you know, the spirit of, of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. That's the anointing. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is already in the world. So I told you, Antichrist spirit was already in the world. Amen. And so that you're supposed to, the, 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 the spirit of Christ, the, the faithful messenger, that we're supposed to speak that, Amen. And so what it does, it causes the people of God to stand in their anointing, to be equipped. Amen. And and it also, the the the, the message, which is, is of the Lord, teaches us to discern what is not of the message, which is of the Lord, that which is of Antichrist. And, and it also, you know, Jesus is the rightful heir and he gave that to us. That's what the Lord was talking about. I've given you the promised land, that earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When you, you take over your promised land, you are acknowledging that that is the Lord's inheritance. Amen. That we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He has given you your inheritance. Amen. And so you're supposed to be able to discern the spirits which are on the messages. Amen. This is your God, little children, and have overcome them, Antichrist spirit, and those that are of the Antichrist spirit. Amen. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. Be careful what is trending, amen, because the world will hear its own. Make sure you don't agree with what the world is saying, which is trending, and the message which is of, of the world, amen. We are of God. He who knows God hears us, and he who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. So there is a spirit of truth by the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a spirit of error, which is by wicked spirits. Amen. That antichrist spirit. There are competing messages. Amen. One message empowers the church and gives understanding. One message sends the, the church into confusion and deception and, 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 and trying to um, protect what is left of them. In other words, there is a spirit, amen, which is of the world where you're trying to save your life. You, you're trying to put on the best face forward, amen, in the midst of the lie, amen. And they cannot coexist. When you give place to the devil, he simply takes over, amen. There's no place of peace. There's no place of rest. The Bible says that there's no peace for the wicked, saith the Lord. Amen. That they are like troubled waters. Amen. Even if the wicked got what they wanted, there will be no peace. Amen. It would lead to one upheaval after another. Amen. And so thank you, Father God, for this message. Amen. Thank you for an anointed message which inspires, which sets your people on fire, which sets forth that which brings revival fire. Amen. A message of truth, a message of truth, a message of life and light, a message that increases, a message of intensity, a message which is like fire. Amen. A message which does not allow people to, to, to settle back in their own ways. Amen. That if you intended to settle back in your own ways, that this message would trouble you until you acknowledge that it was the truth. Amen. Father God, we thank you for your anointing, your help. Amen. In these troubled times mm -hmm. that we get brighter, we get brighter, we get brighter. Amen. We get stronger. Amen. We increase in strength and anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.